So I'm getting ready to coat one of my furnaces and I thought that this would be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about Satanite. This is what it looks like. It comes in a, a gray powder. It's very, very fine. And you can use it to coat soft ceramic uh, fiber or these soft ceramic bricks. And I use it for both. So I haven't been able to find very many videos that talk just about this stuff and show it being mixed. So that's what this is going to be. This isn't going to be uh, like a casting video or anything. So, like I said, this is how it comes. I bought 20 pounds, and this is about 6 pounds, 6, 7 pounds. Okay, so I'm going to put on my respirator, and I'll just do a voiceover of me mixing this. So basically what you want to do is just mix it up until it's uh, very much like sour cream. So this is what it looks like when it's mixed up properly, or at least this is what I feel like it should be. Um, kind of like a, like a thick sour cream kind of consistency. That's what they say in the directions. So, and you definitely want to wear a respirator when you're dealing with this stuff in the, you know, the dry form. But once it's like this, I'm sure it's perfectly safe to be around. So it's nice and mixed. Now I'm going to go ahead and spread it on the furnace. One thing I would recommend is um, to do this in something that you're just going to throw away afterwards. Don't, you know, don't uh, plan on cleaning up everything. I like to use these plastic forks because it acts as a whisk and it gets a lot of the little lumps out of there. And uh, of course they're disposable. I've learned that you can, you can use a brush, but since you're going to throw it away anyways, it's better to just use, you know, your hand and uh, wear some gloves because I get tired of buying the little brushes. And if you use this stuff, after you bake it, it's almost certainly gonna crack and you're gonna have to retouch it up. So, you know, just go ahead and use some gloves and that way you don't have to keep, keep uh, destroying brushes. I know they're inexpensive, but it all adds up after a while. All right. So I'll go ahead and start coating the furnace. So this is the furnace I just made, and I talk about that in another video. But for those of you who haven't seen that, this is, uh, this is Castellite 30, which is a castable refractory cement. I went ahead and I already put a coating of, of Satanite on there. So this is the difference in color. You can see that once it's just um, air dried, this is about 24 hours later. That's what it looks like. So it's a little bit uh, lighter in color. It becomes kind of brownish after it air dries. So I'm just going to go ahead and start smearing this on there. You don't want to go too thick. You can uh, build up a coating of about um, a quarter of, quarter of an inch thick. And uh, you want to do that fairly slowly in a couple applications. So I just put a coating on there. It was probably no more than about an eighth of an inch thick or so. So you just want to build up on that. This stuff does dry up pretty quickly, so you want to um, don't plan on coming back over it, you know, aside from like just a couple seconds later, you know, 30 seconds later or so, you'll notice that it'll actually start to harden up slightly. Um, you can do it, but if you want it to look nice, then just keep that in mind. See what I mean about the glove? I mean, it's, of course, people are going to be doing different things than I'm doing here, but this, with this particular uh, instance, it's definitely better to just use a glove instead of a brush. It also has a very strange smell to it. It's kind of a... Uh, like 
has almost like a burnt smell. You'll notice that as you cure it as well. It smells strange. It's actually not even bad. It's kind of a, I wouldn't say pleasant, but it's, it's not a bad smell, which is good. Um, to give you some idea, I just mixed up probably two pounds of this stuff, maybe slightly under, maybe under that slightly. Um, and that should be enough to do what I'm doing here, to coat the inside and then have some left over to coat a couple or a plinth. A uh, plinth is what you uh, put the crucible on top of in your furnace. And I like to have one ready after I use this stuff so that so that I don't waste it, you know, because it's fairly expensive. I've been buying mine from High Temperature Tools, I believe that's what it's called. I'll put a link in the description to their website. And, uh, you know, they're not helping me out at all. I pay full price for this stuff, but I don't mind linking their website. And I pay 60, this was $60 shipped, and I'm in Nevada, so. Actually, it's only $45, but then they have to charge $15 for shipping in a medium flat rate box. So 20 pounds fits in a medium flat rate box. And so far, I have coated the lid to my new furnace, this furnace. I've coated the lid um, with a lot of this stuff. Quite a few, well, two coatings, two coats, fairly thick coats, probably up to a quarter of an inch or so. And I also coated several plinths and I've only used like four pounds. So it's definitely better though to buy the 20 pound box as opposed to five. Cause I actually bought five pounds before I bought this batch to coat my other furnace and it was just barely enough. So it's better to have more because you're gonna have to end up patching the stuff up when it cures because it, it will crack a little bit. And my experience has been that after it cracks, if you just fill it up, it doesn't re-crack. You just fill those cracks and you're good to go. I think this stuff does require a little bit of maintenance though, so it's better to have some on hand. And, you know, I think when I bought the five pounds, it was, uh, I want to say, yeah, it was $30 for five pounds, and that was shipped. So. See what I mean? It's already changing colors. I don't know if that's coming up in the camera, but see, it's already changing colors as it dries out, so you wouldn't want to go over this area too much. I've experimented around a little bit with this stuff, um, with different uh, mixtures as far as how, how much water there is. I haven't really noticed too much of a difference, I think. The more water you add, the weaker it becomes and the less, um, it, the less insulating it becomes. I think this stuff is fairly forgiving though. So like I said, I like to have one of these soft bricks. Um, coat after that way this stuff doesn't go to waste and if you're using these as plinths they have to be coated with something I've used them without the coating and they just break right away so um, this obviously isn't important this is just a kind of a consumable thing It'll just be used until it you know needs to be replaced so I don't really care too much about making sure that the coating isn't too thick I'll probably get one coating on here and then uh, I may have to recut it. I might not. I don't know. Whoa. And as far as this goes, it doesn't have to be perfect either. I mean, it can be, you can have little areas exposed. My experience has been that it doesn't really matter that much. The bricks still, they last quite a while. Several, several burns. I mean, I'd say even, even up to like a dozen, dozen times. 
these things will last. And I'm melting uh, copper, copper alloys, so. <clears throat> also, if you do this, it's good to have these little standoffs because it's difficult to get all the sides if you don't. And you don't want to lay it just right down onto the onto a surface. Dude, I mean, I have quite a bit left over. It's hard to gauge how much you're going to have left over, so. Apparently this stuff can be used to coat uh, knife blades to prevent scaling, I believe, when you temper, temper blades. I'm not a blacksmith. I don't work with uh, that stuff, so my terminology is probably off, but apparently that's what people use it for. If you do do this, one thing you want to make sure is you know, to have the surfaces that, the surface that will be uh, resting on the furnace floor and the surface that will be uh, touching the crucible. You want those to be fairly flat, of course. Might be stating the obvious, but... So that's good. Right, and now this is basically just waste. Actually, I still have this one that I, I haven't fired yet, but this is just dry. This is probably 48 hours of drying in the sun. I'll go ahead and put some more on there just in case. Cover up some of these empty spots. Yeah, good enough. All right, this is just going to the trash. Yeah, leaked. So this is the lid to my new furnace. And as you can see, these yellowed areas, this is cured satanite. I've already brought this up to probably around 21 or 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. It did crack quite substantially, so I went ahead and I coated it. I filled up those cracks, and those will probably take care of it. It probably won't crack again after that, but if it does, I'll just go ahead and patch up those cracks again. So this coating is fairly durable, and this is ceramic fiber underneath. Here's a wrench. So, I mean, I can, I can hear it kind of cracking just slightly when I do that, but it's fairly strong. You wouldn't want to rest anything on top of this stuff. Like, this is why I have this thick piece of steel here. This is a 7 16 thick piece of um, steel that I welded. That way this contacts the edge of the furnace and not the satanite, or not the ceramic fiber. Um, if if I had the ceramic fiber contacting the edge of the furnace, it would definitely start to crack and crumble after a while. So I have this here that prevents that from happening. Here's my other furnace. As you can see that this is, this is very yellow. This is exactly the same stuff that I just put on the other furnace. And this is uh, it's quite durable quite strong. Some small cracking, but really nothing bad. But the same thing here is that the lid does not contact the ceramic fiber. You can see that the ceramic fiber on this furnace comes up slightly. And then I have the lid here with a rim on it, which contacts this. This is very thin and kind of falling apart, so I have to weld a nice thick chunk of steel on here, but it's, it's worked well for a while. Now this has, I believe, only one coating on it, and you can see that it has cracked in a few places. 
So I, I still need to patch that. I probably should have done that with what I had left over just now. But part of the problem with using steel is that, of course, it will expand and contract. And that may be the, the, uh, the case with this stuff as well. I don't know how this works, but I can tell you that steel expands and contracts. As that occurs, it causes the satanite to crack a little bit. So that's why I used a very thick piece of steel for the other lid. Hopefully that'll prevent that from happening, or it won't, won't happen as, uh, as much. So here's a plinth that I've fired several times, and this just has a very thin coating on it. And this was already cracked. The ceramic brick itself was already cracked. You can see it's definitely survived. If this was uncoated, it would just, the burner or the flame would, uh, would basically melt the brick, cause it to crack. Here's another plinth. This only has uh, one firing, but I brought that up to, you know, 21 to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. And I've already started to patch it. Here's the lid again. Fairly strong. Fairly strong. So I'm not going to cure the satanite that I just put on the furnace over here. Basically what you do is you, uh, you turn on the burner at a very, very low setting and you run it for about a minute or until you see steam start to rise. The goal here is to dry it out extremely slowly. You want to reach a temperature that is below the boiling point of water. If you start to see steam occur, just turn it off, let it cool down for a little while, and then turn it back on. Continue to do that until you no longer see steam, and then you can bring the temperature up slowly until you're at the, uh, the use temperature. And the reason I'm not going to demonstrate that is because it's a pretty boring process and I doubt you'd be able to really see anything. So um, as, as I've shown, you'll see that the color changes and this yellow color is when it's nice and cured. So I hope this has answered your questions. If you have any questions, just please post them in the comments. and. Uh, Either I will respond to them or somebody else with more knowledge on the subject will. So uh, thanks for watching.